we will start in another topic which is throughput accounting so remember in the previous series of videos i've made on performance management we focused on abc which is activity based costing now this is another technique of costing throughput accounting and that's what we'll look at in this video quickly right and a um, few things to note is the fact that okay yeah it's still another costing technique and what you see in performance management is the fact that most of these techniques are improvements on those costing techniques that you learned when you were doing management accounting so things like you learn absorption costing you learn standard costing you learn marginal costing on absorption costing abc came and improved on it this triple accounting is an improvement over marginal costing so this makes marginal costing better the way abc makes absorption costing better right and um, it focuses actually on situation when there is a constraint yeah so i'll just summarize the constraints situation so you know what constraint is i'm going to do a bit of revision on that quickly let me just give you a bit of summary of what throughput account is all about so and what is when you're talking of throughput account what is throughput throughput itself is like an output throughput is your result is your product right so this is a form of accounting that is checking how you can maximize value yeah how you can maximize value from your limited resources from your constraint from limited resources which is the same thing as your constraint yeah yeah that's your bottleneck right and very applicable when you have a just-in-time environment just-in-time environment so it's good to have a bit of understanding of this about throughput so that when we start building on it you know why we're talking about what we say so but before i go into the details of how it is done and all of that let me quickly do a bit of revision on what are constraints and jit yeah just in time so just a bit of revision so what are constraints constraints are your limited resources because they are not overly available when you want to produce 4000 units of product and you only have materials that can produce 2000 unfortunately you are limited to produce 2000 or you don't have people so it can be materials that is limited or it can be labor maybe you don't have enough people to do the job it can even be equipment you might not have enough equipment so it can be machine that is limited so different things can be limited even government policy can limit you that you cannot produce a quantity of product right and there are two types of constraints there's internal constraints and there's external constraints internal constraint is when you are not able to meet the external demand so which means production is less than demand in that case you are the one limiting yourself it's internal but when it is external production is a lot but there's no enough demand so and if we are talking about using this in a GIT environment you cannot produce more than your customers demand because that means you're going to have excess production which you must not have in GIT because you cannot store anything in GIT environment and I'll speak to that briefly as well 
right? So another name for your but constraint is also called bottleneck. It's the same thing. It can be referred to as bottleneck, or it can be also referred to as limited resources. That is what it was called in my own accounting. It's the same concept that we are talking about. Limited resources, right? So take for instance, if you need to produce product D, and to product produce product D, you need to start from material A, convert it to B, convert it to C before it's converted to D. If you need 20 units of D, what you are saying here is that no matter how much of A or B or C that you have available, in as much as it's only 20 that you have to produce because the, the demand is 20, so you cannot sell more than 20. You must make sure that you only have amount of a that can produce 20 units amount of b that can produce 20 units amount of c that can produce 20 units and that aligns perfectly with your just in time environment where you say that you only produce only when there is customer order so you only produce what customer wants to buy. If there is no order from customer, there is no production. So if customer has order for 20 units, it means you're gonna go for what can make you get 20, that can make 20, produce 20, and across is 20, 20, that eventually translates to 20. So in JIT environment, there is no excess, no excess work in progress, no excess products. In fact, no wastages. So it, it's it's an improved and very efficient process. Yeah. So everything must run based on the customer's requirement. And that is why we'll be talking so much about production hours. Because that is what you want to control in throughput accounting. You want to ensure that your production facility is only working based on the limited resources that you have. Yeah, there is no point producing 40 units of B, running the production environment to produce 40 units of B, when you know that eventually only 20 units of C you will use to produce 20 units of D. That you need so this will mean you're going to have 20 excess here so you don't want this to happen so your production hours must be limited yeah must be limited to the constraint because just like the world saying that you are strong as your weakest link if you have facility a B, C, D. If firstly B can run for 10 hours, six, 3 hours, C, 6 hours, and D, 4 hours. If this is a production environment and they are producing one product, unfortunately, you cannot run for more than 3 hours for this production facility because you have a part of your facility that can only work for 3 hours and production section A is now your constraint because you are limited that is the maximum number of hours you can run because if you produce on six hours here produce on four hours they produce a lot on 10 hours here a can only work on for three hours so which means all of these will create excess production for you if you run them on capacity and remember when we are talking of throughput we are talking of git no excess work in progress, no excess product, no wastages. So in that case, you must run for three hours. So you limit this to three hours, three hours, and three hours, even when they can do more. So that is, because I need you to understand this background before we start building into technicalities of throughput accounting. Yeah, I hope that is clear, right? So, and your, Constraints can actually be seen in same light a, a 
facility runs or our no connection runs remember for every facility that is input you process the input and it gives you the output your input is your raw materials which is like inventory yeah your process is your operating expenses yeah that you use machine works on in depreciation you buy all of that just people and labor and everything they work on the inputs and gives you the, your output your output is called your throughput remember that is your throughput that is your result so you can have constraint here you can have constraint here and likewise you can have constraint here especially if you're talking of external constraint here because even if you can produce 1 million if the external constraint constraint which is demand is just 500 in this place you are limited to produce 500 because that is what the demand needs. so every organization can be analyzed into these three categories and they can experience constraint at each stage very important now that i've given that background how do you solve this constraint problem what is the solution because we've been talking about problem what is the solution and that is throughput accounting which is now what i want to talk about your throughput accounting is the solution and that is the essence of talking about throughput accounting because you want to maximize value from your limited resources and you need an accounting technique that can help you maximize the value marginal costing is good but now throughput accounting is better and i will explain why it is better maybe i should quickly talk about why it is better before i go into the steps on how to do throughput accounting number one reason why it is better is because with improved facilities that we have most of much of lib of um production cost yeah majority of production cost is now based on machine and labor cost is relatively fixed so if you remember in marginal cost if you are doing marginal costing we always say variable cost is equals to material cost plus labor cost because we can calculate number of hours you can spend to produce one unit of product that is when production facility used to be labor intensive but these days is no more labor intensive and now machine intensive which means most of the workers you have are only working based on significant fixed salary which means even if you don't produce mostly you will pay them a lot of them are doing supervise maybe supervising the machine or just doing a little manipulation of machines working on different types of machine different types of process different types of product because is they are more generalized and less specific because machines are now doing most of the work so with the new inventions and innovations going on labor costs are now considered to be relatively fixed and because of that in throughput accounting your so this is your marginal costing but throughput accounting is now saying that yeah you say fixed cost is your overhead in marginal costing that is correct in those days holding this but now in throughput accounting your variable cost is just material cost and your fixed cost now includes your overhead and labor cost that is number one thing to take note likewise in marginal costing you talk of contribution and you already know where i'm going to because contribution is equal to selling price minus variable cost i remember variable cost is a combination of material cost and labor cost but in throughput accounting 
The similar concept is called the throughput, yeah, which is similar to your contribution here. But that one is now calculated as selling price minus material cost. So these are the two things that have been improved on over the marginal costing. And that is why we'll be focusing on throughput accounting and these changes will reflect in what we do. Yeah. So what throughput accounting is saying is that we must get best value. Yeah. Best value means maximum value. That's what I'm talking about. Maximum value from products. with highest throughput accounting ratio yeah which is something as contribution per unit that we were using in marginal costing right so this is throughput accounting ratio and now we'll, we'll talk about how to calculate all of that but that is the summary of throughput accounting it wants to determine throughput accounting ratio and by doing that you'll be able to rank product and focus on products that gives the highest throughput accounting ratio yeah so in this case to get this obviously like we said we don't want to waste our production hours very important remember our production hours is very important so we make sure that we only run our factory our facility putting into consideration our constraint so we put that into serious consideration and quickly let's talk about what are the steps in throughput accounting steps and step one is you need to identify the constraint if you don't know the constraint you cannot maximize it so you need to identify the constraint that you have is it machine hours is it a process is it a department is it external or is it even both so identify the constraint when you know the constraint then you can now talk about maximizing because when you identify the constraint you can determine your Throughput accounting ratio, which is step two, and once you do that, you can maximize. So you need, to, if you know your constraint, your decision is: I want to maximize my output. Yeah, based on that constraint, because I don't want to just be running my factory when I know that I'm going to be limited by something. So I need to put into consideration my constraint before I run my facility once i maximize it then i can now try to resolve the constraint so that i can remove it and i can produce as much as i want but the first thing is i need to maximize what i have first then i can remove the limitation so you resolve the constraint and how do you resolve constraint you just increase capacity so this is not difficult increase capacity improve efficiency yeah, in case you are asked, those are the two ways. Yeah, and identifying constraint is straightforward. This is where the work is. This is where we spend most of the time. How do you maximize output based on constraint? That is what we are talking about, and it's very important because what we are talking about is we we'll maximize output based on. We see max value based on ISTPAR. So our focus is on throughput accounting ratio. And what is throughput accounting ratio? What throughput accounting ratio is do is not is doing is not complicated. It's not hard. It's even very straightforward. What it's just saying is is comparing return. And I will explain. I will give you the formula above. Before I get into that, let me break it down. It's only compare return and cost. That is the concept. And in English, how do I say it? I will say, what is it saying is that for 
remember i said you don't want to run your production facility when you know that you are going to be limited by something somewhere so you are saying that for every one hour yeah that our factory works yeah for every one hour that our factory works you're not asking this question how much how much throughput and you know what throughput means i've told you anytime you hear throughput think about outcome yeah output think about return yeah think about benefit yeah this word are all the same yeah in this how much return how much throughput how much output how much benefit do we get compared to the cost we incur every hour So this is what throughput accounting ratio is helping you to understand. And that is why the throughput accounting ratio formula is simply talking about return. So you can now understand the formula. Why is return per factory hour? Let me write it in full so that you don't think I'm trying to do division there. So return per factory hour divided by cost per factory hour. Yeah. Let me write this one in full as well. Just to avoid confusion. I need you to because I know students struggle a lot with throughput accounting, but it's one of the simplest accounting technique, costing technique. Right? Return per factory hour. Return per factory hour. And I hope it's making sense. Right. Right. Return per factory hour divided by cost per factory hour. Because we are saying that how much return do I get in excess of cost? Which means the higher the better. So please take note the higher the better because it means the denominator is much more than the sorry, the numerator is much more than the denominator. You always want your return to be greater than your cost. Yeah? So if it is equals to one, what does it mean? It's almost like break-even point. No profit, no loss. If it's greater than one, that is fantastic. That is profitable product. Yeah? But it's less than one, that is really a loss-making venture. That is loss-making. So, which means you need to avoid this product. But what do you do? Produce this product? What about this? Question mark. There might be strategic decision to consider whether for prestige or for reputation we want to do it. But I can't tell you categorically whether to do it or not to do it. But if everything is at constant, I will not do a break even product. I will focus on profitable product. Right. Okay, very good. Now, knowing what we know now, we know the formula to calculate throughput accounting ratio, then we understand what it means depending on the answer we have. We know that we always want this. And if we have product A, B, C, giving us throughput accounting ratio, all of them greater than one. Sorry, this is what we want. Not this one. We don't want this one. We want this one. So let's say throughput accounting ratio of A is 
B is 2 and C is 2.2. You can see all of them have more than one. However, this is where ranking takes place. So you need to do ranking. Yeah? And maximize a product that gives you the highest throughput accounting ratio. Because what this is saying is that C will give you the maximum value from your limited resources. And now, we know how to calculate throughput accounting ratio. How do you calculate return power and cost per factory hour? A return per hour, like I told you, to calculate return per hour, I told you return is the same thing as throughput, which is the same thing as output, the same thing as the benefit. So your return per hour in this throughput accounting is the same thing as your throughput per hour So throughput per unit, yeah, which is your like a contribution. I gave you the formula for throughput earlier here, this one, yeah. Remember, which is selling price minus material cost. So your throughput per unit, you just divide it by your hours, which is you know remember it's going to take you some hours to produce the product. So. And looking at your throughput per unit then divided by the time in hours to produce that one this one unit yeah to produce that one unit how many hours will it take to produce that one unit yeah and remember while you are doing all of this constraints you must never forget that you need to be doing it with your constraints in mind yeah because you are limited by your constraints and what's your cost per hour Just remember cost per factory hour this part that is also straightforward that is just looking at the total factory cost so your total factory cost divided by the total factory hours. Yeah, remember your factory cost is your overhead and your labor cost. Remember it's different from marginal cost. 